Hi, and welcome to People, Process and Platform, a community-focused approach. Let's dive straight in there. Let me share my screen and we can get going. All right. Um, well, first of all, just a little bit about me and why I'm giving this talk. Um, so my name is Nikki Watt, and I am the CTO and CEO at a company called Open Credo. We're a hands-on software development consultancy that um, help our clients deliver effectively in a variety of different areas. The one that's most appropriate to this talk is platform engineering. And we've helped a number of different clients with their internal developer platforms, and we've seen many of the trials and tribulations along the way. And I'm hoping that this talk will be able to share some of those insights with you and help you hopefully build um, good platforms yourself. So one of the things that I've really observed is that um, in the push to adopt innovative new technology platforms, um, we seem to have lost sight of the innovators in the communities that are actually trying to use it. And for those platforms that don't quite seem to work out as planned, I believe that this is in large due to the fact that there's an unhealthy focus on the cool new innovative technologies and not so much on the broader human or developer experience around it. So you might say, well, what's the answer? Simple Venn diagram, of course. Um, you know, you need to build a, a platform. It's got to target some people. It needs to include enough processes to keep everybody happy. Um, and you simply combine all of these. You find the intersection and you have yourself a super platform. The problem, of course, is that we know it's never quite that simple. Now, why is that the case? Firstly, I would say your audience is generally more diverse than you actually realize at first. It consists of multiple different communities with varying skills and requirements, and all of these need to be taken into account. Now, if we look at who tends to build these platforms, it's often the platform infrastructure engineers. And they will tend to have a lot of understanding in this area around things like infrastructure as code and Kubernetes. But a common mistake that we often see clients making when they start out is that uh, building at this level is that they expect others to also be able to operate at the same level. So practically, this sometimes manifests in um, too low level functionality being exposed to end users, things like maybe low level Kubernetes controls. But we know that there's far more um, communities that need to be taken into account as well. So the main one, most obvious one, is obviously your developers um, and the development teams because they're the primary users of the platform, but they're not the only ones. You now also have um, data scientists, machine learning engineers, and they've got a very different set of requirements. They've got things like versionable data, data lineage, and ML ops, which also needs to be, um, to be factored into, into what's built. You also have leadership and governance. Now, whilst um, these, won't, these people won't interact with your platform in the same way, they are still wanting to need and understand how they, the, they get return on their investment. And this might come through things like reports uh, and the like. But secondly, and I would say this is the single biggest misconception, is that people often believe that this can be solved through technology alone. Now, whilst a good technical implementation is very important, things like automating and creating the right level of abstraction for different groups, it often really isn't enough, or it's never enough. Um, we've seen many a client proudly build their platform, only to discover that the teams who are supposed to use it actually don't. And this is because they've come to rely on what I would often call the misquoted field of dreams movie principle, which is, if you build it, they will come. And quite often, they simply don't come. Now, the problem is really that it takes more than just technology to get teams to buy into a platform. You also need to be very purposeful about driving engagement. And you need to make it a priority to try and sort of shift your communities to the left. So how is this done? It's often done by rethinking how the teams themselves actually interact with the platform and with one another. And we need to look at finding different ways of engaging and accommodating teams and communities to bring them closer to our sort of platform field of dreams, so to speak. Thirdly, and finally, I think we all tend to like to imagine that the things around us are static and that once we've set up processes, um, they will be sufficient. But again, the reality shows us that it's not just the requirements, but staff, experience levels and team structures are constantly changing and evolving around us. So governance and some of the processes should not just be a, a, a one size fits all that is set in the beginning of time and, and never evolves. 
it needs to take some of these factors into account. But the key point I really want to make here is that building a good internal developer platform requires viewing this as a holistic socio-technical challenge. Now that's a big word, but all I really mean here is that you need to consider solving for both the technical and the social dimensions of this challenge at the same time and recognizing that they are interdependent and that they affect one another. So how do we get there? So I'm gonna start off by looking at some of the observed characteristics that we see in successful platform endeavors that our clients have engaged with, and then look at some of the principles underpinning that and diving to one or two examples and suggestions for getting there. So first up, um, successful experiences tend to be ones where there are very clear boundaries and responsibilities established. So it's quite obvious from uh, in terms of what the platform does versus what the teams uh, using it actually do. So the teams understand what's required of them and what processes need to be followed in order to be good citizens of the platform. Now, if you don't have clear boundaries and responsibilities, you just land up with a bit of a blame game, for example, with um, devs who blame the platform team when anything goes wrong, and likewise platform teams who say, well, the developers never look at the logs and uh, they should look at that first. Now, following this, um, I'd say the single most top desire uh, that we see of platform um, users is to have a self-service capability, and specifically one that is as automated as much as possible. Why? Because it provides them with the tools and the means they need to achieve um, what they're doing independently and allows them to go as fast or as slow as they need to go and essentially control their own destiny. And this is not just through um, APIs, it's also through um, processes and documentation as well. But thirdly, um, both technology and processes, as I said before, need to be flexible and evolvable. Whilst the platform needs to be opinionated enough to ensure order, it does need to be tailored to adapt to the diverse communities, um, including allowing for deviation if required. Otherwise, you just become a bottleneck. So you can't have a, a one size fits all. You also do need to uh, make sure that your platform is reliable. So if your platform, for example, is going to make some guarantees about um, maybe auto scaling or something like that, you need to really make sure that it does. Because if you don't, it doesn't matter how good your PR is, your teams and the management will not have confidence in the platform and it will basically become a white elephant and people just won't use it. Now, instead of diving straight into the do's and don'ts, um, as I said before, um, a good way that we found to, to look at this problem is uh, by following what I would call four basic community-driven principles, and then letting these guide the practical solutions and the approaches that uh, we come up with to solve the problem. Now, you may come up with a different uh, implementation, but I'd argue that the principles still hold true. So let's go through some of these. Um, oh, just a note, actually, is that there's only so much that I can cover in um, 15 minutes. So if you do want more details, I do have a previous talk uh, and an InfoQ blog post on this topic that you can follow these links and get more info there. So the first principle is to make teams independent of and not dependent on you. So obviously, they're going to be dependent on you to some extent because they need to use the platform. But what you don't want to do is to make them need you or your team to personally have to intervene each time they need to do some task. We're aiming here for empowerment. So the type of things that you can do include um, uh, defining a platform contract. So this doesn't have to be anything fancy. A simple document will do. Something uh, like the sort of AWS shared responsibility model. Now, this makes clear what the platform does versus what you as a team are expected to do. Concretely, this would be in an area, for example, like security, where you could say the platform team is responsible for the Kubernetes node security, but the teams themselves need to scan their own images and deal with any vulnerabilities. As a platform team, you may give them the tools to do that, but it's their responsibility to, to take care of that. Automating as much as possible and using APIs is, is key as well. And this includes in areas like onboarding and infrastructure provisioning, to help people get going uh, fast straight away, but also to keep going um, as, their, as their needs change. The second principle um, is to promote freedom over autonomy. 
Now, instead of going into the subtleties of language and definitions, I'm just going to rephrase this to be promote freedom within boundaries over anything goes. So providing freedom within boundaries means that uh, you allow everybody to basically play nicely with one another, and it doesn't create a complete free-for-all and a bad experience for the community, but it does allow some choice. So practically, what does this look like? So I would say I'm just going to focus on one particular sort of area here, and this is around the area of choice. So uh, things like technology stacks are, are quite popular uh, in this particular um, aspect. So you may, as a platform team, decide, or as, a, as, as, as a, the general team, decide that there's three or four stacks that you're going to support. Um, maybe it's a Java Spring Boot setup, or a Go Node.js setup, or whatever your particular flavors are. But you allow um, teams to choose from, from these options, rather than just allowing absolutely anything to go. And you can also then provide them with templates and reference implementations uh, to help them practically actually understand how to do this effectively. So the teams are constrained, yes, but they do have the freedom still to choose from a, uh, a set of options which is appropriate for their setup. So some of these choice and options also do um, come for a specific ecosystem. So for example, you might say, well, you can provision everything, you can provision anything, but it needs to be done using Terraform as, as the tool. So the third uh, community principle is really to focus more on maybe a bit of the softer skills, and that is to be a role model and walk the talk. So the key here is really to make sure that you practice what you preach and that um, ideally you can eat your own dog food. So this includes, for example, using your own tooling. If you are going to um, ask people to provision their infrastructure using your own tools, you should be doing the same thing yourself. This is really the fastest way, A, to verify that it works and it's a good developer experience because you're often more inclined to fix things that affect yourself personally uh, than when it's just somebody else's problem. And the other thing uh, key here is actually to recognize that you and your platform team are the professional services. There is no external entity that can help you. Um, and you and your team are going to need to work with the other teams to help them overcome and embrace the platform. Now, this is where sometimes I think managers don't explicitly plan and actually carve time out for this, hoping that you know, they can either just ignore it or that it's just going to happen on the side somehow. But this is a, a common misconception, and it really just leads to frustration and overall sort of overworked staff. So making time for this uh, is, a, is a key thing. And areas that can help you is also doing workshops and embedding people in teams. Now, the fourth and final community principle is to respect and recognize community differences so that you can cater for them appropriately. Now, besides the um, technical uh, abstractions, which you might create for different groups at different levels, team and people-wise, uh, there are uh, things to consider. And I would highly recommend reading the book Team Topologies from Matthew Skelton and Manuel Pace because it really does provide a really good way to have a look at different ways that you can structure teams and allow them to interact in different ways, depending on the context that you find yourself in and the challenge you're trying to solve. Now, some recent examples on some of the projects that we've had have included, for example, having an initial platform team, but then splitting that up into two so that one can focus on some of the more sort of, uh, we had a data mesh um, platform, a data mesh project, and that required a, a specialized team to, to focus on that particular area as opposed to uh, some of the other um, sort of stuff that was going on. Now, the platform team is also an excellent example of how a team would operate in an as-a-service mode um, with, with the other teams and providing um, interfaces and, and services that way. So loaning your people out, um, helping to bootstrap new teams with experienced platform skills are some of the key things that you can do here. Now, that has been a bit of a whistle-stop tour, um, but in summary, um, I'd just like to say that uh, to build a, a good platform, you need to start out with a good foundation. Didn't mention this, but you do need C-level buy-in and enough technical expertise to journey safely. But if you allow yourself to be guided by these core community principles, you aim for some of the successful uh, platform characteristics that we've outlined, 
you will hopefully create a great platform experience uh, that will really resonate and satisfy your end users. And with that, um, I hope to take some questions in the, in the chat afterwards. So please do get hold of me there. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.